good afternoon class. It's another bright day and a good day for another lesson in plumbing. This afternoon, we turn our attention to drainage after doing installation for various appliances in plumbing. It's time now to remove the wastewater from the appliances and from the building. In order to be able to remove the water that you have supplied into the building and which has been used and it has become dirty now, you have to use a system of pipework that we call the drainage system. Drainage system are divided into two. There is the system that we do above the ground and the system that we do below the ground. This afternoon, we are going to look at the systems that we do above the ground. Before we go to the systems, I would like to remind you and every one of you the type of sanitary appliances that you have already seen and some of which have been installed and you have seen the method and procedure of installing them. All sanitary appliances, I have listed, listed them here on the board, all sanitary appliances are divided into two categories. We have what we call soil appliances and waste appliances. Soil appliances are those appliances that receive and dispose of waste from human beings. I'll repeat again. Soil appliances had or receive waste from human beings and then dispose of the waste through a system of pipework which we are going to do this afternoon. That is above ground drainage. Among the soil appliances that receive waste from human beings, we have the water closet, WC. We have the urino, which we have already installed. We have another one we call bad bedpan washer and slop sink. The first two are very common, WC and urino. Maybe some of you may not have come across bed pan washer and slop sink. A bed pan washer is not an appliance that is installed in every house. No, this is a special appliance which is installed mainly in hospitals. What am I saying? All of you know that when you take sick people to the hospital, they are admitted in bed and in wards, an admission ward, which contains a bed. In hospital, we have WC. We have all these appliances. But we have some sick people who cannot go to the toilet on themselves. So they must be assisted while at the bedside. So what happens? The hospital staff, the nurses, and the carers who are taking care of the sick people, when the person wants to go to the toilet and cannot take himself there, they normally close at the curtains of his cubicle and they bring what we call a bedpan washer. This bedpan washer, this is one that they remove the soiled bed sheets and blankets, and then they take them for washing. Then, when they wash those dirty sheeting and dirty bedding, dirty blanket, where do they pour the waste? They don't take it to the WC. Many people would think that we take it to the WC. We don't. Why? Because this is a sick person. This WC in the hospital is being used by other people other than him. So if you take it and pour it here, the next person to use the WC may contaminate your disease. So that is cancelled. We have a special appliance, which we call a slop sink. A slop sink is the one that receives this waste from the patient at the bedside. Once you wash and remove and put them in the bucket, he, they go and pour it in a slop sink. The slop sink is supplied with both hot and cold water. It has also a platform where the bucket that you have brought, which is soiled or dirty, can rest. 
Then you open the tap, hot water and cold water, and you clean your bucket and you pour there so that the bucket's ready for another part. And it has also a high level flushing system. After you have poured the waste into the bowl of the slop sink, which looks like a WC, then you flush the high level system and the waste goes. So that's the purpose of a bedpan washer and a slop sink for those who are coming across this for the first time. The second category of appliances is what we call waste appliances. These appliances handle only soap water. They don't handle waste from human beings. So they handle other waste from other appliances other than this one that we have seen. And this include a washer basin. A wash basin. So you know what we do at the wash basin, brushing your teeth, washing your face in the morning. We have a kitchen sink. This is where we wash all the dishes and clean them and dry them. We have a shower where, again, we use soap to wash only the external part of our body and a bathtub. These are called waste appliances. And they had only soap water. So this, in conclusion and in general, are the general, very common appliances that are to be found in any type of building. May it be school, may it be domestic house, may it be even industrial or an office block. You'll find at least some of these appliances there and some of these. You may not find all of them at the same place. So from here, and with that knowledge now, then we are able to design our drainage system because we have to drain. So what happens in your building? You have first to consider the appliances that you have in that building. What type of building is it? So if you find it an office block, for example, or a domestic house, definitely they don't need bedpan washer, they don't need slop sink. So it's because it's not a hospital. You will most likely find a WC and a urinal. You'll also find a wash basin, a kitchen sink, because people have to eat a shower or a bathtub. These are common. So the type of building determines the type of system, I mean the type of drainage system that we use. Now we turn to the drainage systems. As plumbing students, I'm sure this is not the first time that you are hearing about drainage systems. Drainage systems, this is an arrangement of pipework to remove the waste water and waste matter from the sanitary appliances that we have seen. Drainage systems are divided into two. We have what we call above ground drainage, We have above ground drainage system and below ground drainage system. These are the most common systems. Today and this afternoon, we are dealing with the first one, which is above ground. Below ground is for another day.
For above ground system, it is divided into three parts. We have what we call a single stack system. A one, what we call fully vented one pipe system. And what we call a two pipe So these are the three types of above ground drainage system. Once again, single stack system, fully vented system, fully vented one pipe system, and two pipe system. What is the difference? As the name suggests, maybe I start from below. A two pipe system, which is a very common system in Rwanda, has two types vertical pipes, which we call stacks. These stacks receive waste from the appliances above ground. They are connected, and I am sure you have seen some vertical pipe running from either the outside wall or somewhere inside the building up to the ceiling, of the, to, to the roof level, or even above. So they are two vertical big pipes of a diameter of 110, and they are not jointed. One of the pipe receives waste from soil appliances. So it only connects to Urano and WC. We call it a soil stack. The second one receives waste from waste appliances. And we call it a waste stack. So that's why we are talking about two pipe system. So they receive separately from soil appliances and from waste appliances. Then they take them to below ground. And once they go separately to below ground, the one for soil appliances goes direct septic tank. The one for waste appliances goes direct, not to the septic tank, goes to the soak pit, to be paid. So this is the difference. So the two waters or the two waste never meet because if they, they, have individual, they have individually to drain to the I mean, relative or suitable stack. Soil appliances to soil stack. Waste appliances to waste stack. Then from there, they go to the ground as drains and then they also go separately. One goes to the septic tank, the other one goes to the soap pit. That's about two pipe system. Fully vented one pipe system means that they are all combined together in one pipe. But because of some problems like loss of trap seals and all that that we studied in DOA last time, you make sure that this system is vented. So it has two stacks, but all the waste are combined to one stack. The second smaller stack is for venting the system or ventilating the system. And that's why we are calling it fully vented one pipe system. Finally, we have the single stack, which is the reason for us today. This one has no ventilation. It is a single pipe and all soil appliances and waste appliances drain into the same stack. The only condition in single stack systems, we have li limits distances as to how far an appliance should be from the stack. If it's, for example, WOC, 1.5 meters. If it's a wash out basin, 1.6 meters. If it's a kitchen sink, 2.3 meters. Those are set and tested dimensions. If you exceed that, you will have problems in the system. So those are maximum distances that you should not exceed. And so that defines the single stack system. Now, let's zero in on the single stack system, which is our lesson for today, and very quickly.